Hi everyone, how are you? I'm Rachel Chamness at Soundwave Seal. I'm a shamanic channel and mentor. Welcome to Live in 5D. Today we are calling in spiritual protection, how to build a sacred circle, set up a protective altar, and more. So that's what we'll be talking about today in this short live because I definitely respect your time. So let's begin. We're going to jump right in. I'd love to hear from you, especially if you're an advanced channel or you're already channeling. What are the spiritual protections that you set forth for yourself? What are you doing for yourself to really make sure that when you are channeling that you're doing it safely? That's what I would love to hear from you. So why? Why should we make a spiritual circle and altar? Why should we do that? What's the point of that? Well, because you are a bright light. You're a bright light, you're a healer, you're a channel, you're a light worker. And so you're shining out and you want to be safe and protected. You want to make sure that you can really trust that you're safe so that you can go deeply into your channeling, possibly trans channeling. You know, you're tapping into the unknown, you're tapping into org fields and you want to be safe. You want to be protected. You want to have some sort of ritual that you do before you begin. And that will help keep you not only just safe, because, you know, we do need to have these protective measures as we are growing and healing ourselves, but also just so you can know that you can really trust your answers and trust and all of that. Hey, good morning. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. All right. So some caveats, some things we should think about. So when I teach, and of course I do, I teach accelerated channeling, advanced channeling. And when I teach, I really ask that there be no drugs or alcohol used. Of course, like you're not going to go to a class after doing this, I would think, but just in case, I'd like to talk about it a little bit. So no drugs, no alcohol. I would even really look at painkillers, mood stabilizers. Any of these things would mean that you don't even qualify for my course. Like I don't teach anyone who is taking these because they get in the way of protection. They get in the way of you building a really safe, bubble for yourself to channel in. And so usually for people who are, you know, taking painkillers or mood stabilizers, then I try to help them change that, you know, find someone who can help them like a naturopath and clear some of the emotional reasons that you're having pain, because there's always emotional reasons behind pain. There's always things that you can do in the spiritual realm that will help all kinds of pain and even other things too. Of course, I'm not a doctor. So if you have a chemical imbalance, you know, we do the best we can with that and try to find some help for you that would make a big difference. Now, of course, we're going to talk about cannabis. Everyone's going to say, but you don't mean cannabis, right? Actually, I do. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend that you do that before you channel. And here's why. I know it's different. For some people, they really like to do cannabis, psychedelics, and then they feel like they're really connected. But what I would like to tell you is that you don't need those things and you should learn to do it all by yourself build your confidence and build your protection. First of all, cannabis doesn't treat everybody the same. If I do it, then I feel completely unprotected. I feel like I am a sitting duck and anything could happen to me. I can't call my spirit guys, like nothing works. I feel like for me, it just doesn't work at all. So if you're the opposite and you feel like it connects you more then now you're using it as a crutch, I'd like you to learn how to do it without it and really see what you can do and how you can feel amazing amazing that you don't even need drugs because you can do it with channeling. When you channel in higher dimensional realms, you feel incredible. It feels really good to be able to talk to these beings and channel them, bring their healing through. It feels wonderful. You really don't need it. So that's why I usually say you don't need psychedelics. I know that many people do psychedelics in this sort of journey with a pro. And if you do that, then of course you're most likely going to be fine and no problems will arise. But if it's not done correctly and considering that everyone is different, so even a pro can't always provide the most protection, depending on what happens, that you can cause holes in your orc field. And I do uh, clear these for people. So, you know, I mean, it's not like a life sense or anything. You can have it cleared, you can have it fixed, but you don't want holes in your orc field and you don't need it. So that's just my little spiel. Don't do drugs in the channel. No big deal if you like to do drugs, but you want to make sure that your org feels really clean and clear that you're learning how to do this on your own. You don't need a crutch. Okay, so that's my little 
talk about that. Now let's talk about crystals. You can protect your space with crystals. So this is how I build an altar. So I set up an altar to protect my space and to call in a sacred circle or sacred sphere. But the first part of this is that you protect your space with crystals. So I really recommend quartz crystals. I would say, you know, something about this size, at least if you want to go crazy and get like huge crystals, go for it. Where do you put these? All four corners of your home. And then I would again put all four corners of your yard. If you have a yard or your space outside, you want to bury them in the dirt and you want to put these in the corners of your home. If your home's not perfectly square, which I doubt it is, then you might need more than four. You know, you might want to put an extra one in that extra side or so that all four corners or if you have extra corners are, that they're all out there and then of course i would do again in the yard and you'll want to clear these these need clearing they're quartz crystals i would recommend that you clear them with reiki clear them with um angel fire with starlight whatever you're using the other thing that i recommend is black tourmaline so black tourmaline comes in many you know sometimes it's polished but this is a piece i have right here and i take black tourmaline and i put it on top of every window and door just to clear that now when you're using black tourmaline you're using all these you want to spend some time clearing them every once in a while so this is why reiki one at least i would say it's mandatory it's mandatory. You guys need to be able to do some kind of healing. You need to be able to clear yourself. And Reiki one heals you so deeply. You know, you need to be able to clear things. So I'm clearing with Reiki, these quartz crystals and these black tourmaline crystals in my home all the time. And I have more. I don't just use that. So there's more that you can use. If you'd like, you can also add rose quartz, amethyst, rainbow obsidian, Okay, so why? Rose quartz is really great because it will transform into love. So what I do is I take rose quartz and I put it in the four corners and I also put it anywhere where I might need a little extra attention. So let's say you have a neighbor that you feel their vibe is low or there's some like drama over there or something like that, then you would line your property line with rose quartz. So I would take maybe small, small little crystals. They don't have to be huge. I wouldn't use tiny ones like this size. I would use at least like, you know, something like this. And as many as you can, put them all along the property line between you and a neighbor that you have some concerns about. And then also you can use rainbow obsidian. I use rainbow obsidian and rose quartz and amethyst and clear quartz in all the corners. It's only four or five places. It's not that expensive to get small little stones. In fact, it's sometimes easier to get a little bit smaller to like fit them in the baseboards, the corners, and let, you know, if you have someone clean your house, let them know that's supposed to be there. So I like rainbow obsidian because it's grounding. It helps clear the root chakra and the earth star. It really clears you, but it's also really protective for portals and things like that. And when you use it with rose quartz, then it enhances the speed and rate in which you recover from things. It replenishes your energy field and also helps with grounding. So grounding is super important. we always need to be grounding as a channel. If you're not grounded, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> the most important thing to do is ground. Do you know all these things? Is this like old hat? Maybe you're in my tag or maybe you've taken my courses and you know how to do this already, or maybe you've learned it from somewhere else or you do it slightly different. I'd love to hear how you do it. There are a lot of things that you can do to protect yourself so that you don't have to be working all the time, using your energy, clearing things all the time, fighting things off. This is about your personal energy, how to bring it up so that you don't have to be doing this constantly, constantly. So that's what this is about. So sure, you could not do it, but then you're wasting a lot of energy. And that is a problem because you need that energy. You know, sometimes people don't know how they're channeling and it's draining them. They're getting really, really tired because they don't really know all of the little things that can help. And so I teach a lot of clients who come in, they already know how to channel. They take my channeling courses and learn a bunch of ways to keep themselves from wasting energy to click in and connect deeper. Since I do a tune with my voice, I use liquid Reiki shamanic healing, as you know, and I connect people directly to different frequencies to help them channel as well. And we do all kinds of things like that. But going on, that's what I would use. Rose quartz, amethyst, rainbow, obsidian, and the quartz. But at least use the quartz, is what I'm saying. And the black tourmaline on the doors. Hi, Kelly. Yes, that's what this is all about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. 
This is for energy workers and sessions. This is for channeling of all kinds. So Reiki is channeling. All kinds of healing is channeling. It's not coming from your personal energy. At least I hope not. If you're using your personal energy for healing, then it's going to really deplete you. So you want to channel it with Reiki light language or some sort of healing like that. Angel fire. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. I would do this kind of altar and this kind of spiritual protection for everything, for Reiki healing, for everything. Okay, so let's talk about setting up the altar. You want earth, air, fire, and water. So this is my altar. I took this picture for you yesterday. So let's go through it, okay? So I started here. I added, first I added, this is a Reiki protection manifesting. I also put a Reiki grid in the middle. So a crystal grid in the middle. And I, I use the Antakarana, which I teach in my master teacher psychic Reiki healing course. So that's what that's about. That's my cloth that I'm using. It will amplify everything. So this is the fire corner. The fire corner is the south. That's where I call an Archangel Michael. And so I'll use anything that has to do with fire. So that includes like a candle. I would definitely recommend a candle. And I have a lot of dragon things, as you can see right there. Now, opposite of that, of course, I used a compass from my phone. And that's what you should use as well. And that will help you determine where is north, south, east, and west. So here in the north, that's Archangel Uriel. That's Earth. So I'm putting things in there for Earth. So you can see I'm using... Well, it's too fast, but you can see that in that corner for earth, I'm using a petrified wood. I'm using stones, crystals, and some fairy things. So those are little fairy things. I put more in there in a minute. And then that's the west corner. That's Gabriel, water. So these are all water things. Can you see there's like a mermaid, fluorite. There's lots of little shells. There's a little mermaid that someone made for me once, so pretty. And sometimes I put a little water in the shells as well. Um, anything that reminds you of water is perfect for that section. So now you can see that I've added, added a turtle for the water. And then I've added some fairy things. You see the tiny fairy things that maybe you can't see them over there. Now I'm doing the, and so west is water. That's Gabriel. North is Uriel. And now we have east, which is Raphael. And it doesn't matter what order you do them. So here's east, Raphael. That's air. So ooh, let me go back a little bit. So that's air. And you can see what I've used there is sage, feathers, lots of feathers that I found and I put there, sage and other kinds of bundles. And um, there's also uh, sweet grass behind my hand there, you see that? And that's where I put all that. And now I'm just setting up a Reiki crystal grid in the middle there. So that's for my own use of manifesting. I put that in the middle. So why do you make an altar? Because you don't want to be putting all your precious things in the corner of your office, right? So when I'm building a sacred circle in my room that I'm channeling, then I'm also putting those quartz crystals and other crystals in the corner of my office. This is the place that I'm always doing my channeling. This is where I do all of my sessions. I want this to be super protected. And the way that I do that is to build it. You just build and build and build the energy by making a sacred circle in here all the time. And instead of putting all my precious things in the corner, I put them in this altar. You can see it's right behind me. I put it all on my altar and then I call in my sacred circle, which we do next. And that's what I do. And so of course I'm going to light the candle. The candle needs to be lit uh, for the sessions. Okay. So let's go through this again. I put the crystals all four or six, however it works, corners of my home. And I put them all four corners of my yard and I put them all four corners of my office because now my office or my spiritual center where I'm doing sessions, this is really important. So if you have an office inside someone else's place, then you, you can just do it all around in the four corners of your office. That's fine. But I also wanted it for my home. I also wanted it for the yard. I wanted it everywhere, right? So it's really important. So the next thing is, are you clear? Do you know how to tell if you're clear? Do you have understanding of this or know how to do this kind of stuff we cover in my courses and in my membership? You need to know, you need to have a way to tell if you are clear or not. Now I do have a blog post about this, but mainly I would use pendulum to see if a regular statement works. So I can say, I'm Rachel Chamnus, and it gives me a huge yes. That means, so if sometimes it says no, then I know that I'm not clear and I need clearing. All right, but it is tricky and discernment's a big deal. I wanna talk about a few things that I like to say. Declarations for healers and for channels. So this is a really important one. I only work with beings of the light. I only work with beings of the light. So important, so important. I say this every single day because you never know what you might say on accident. 
Let nothing from me attach to my client. Let nothing from my client attach to me. I teach this in all of my healing work. Very, 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 very important. This is a great question. So if you use someone else's space, a travel altar, maybe. Yes, absolutely. If I use someone else's space, let's say you use another energy healer space. I would just clear it with Reiki before I come in. Or as I come in, I clear the whole space. I clear the whole building and especially clear that space. I do use someone else's space, but they're very high vibe. And then I would put my crystals in the corner and I would keep them. This is my little travel bag that I take for retreats and things like that. Or if I'm going to like a crystal shop or something and I put my crystals in here so that I can travel, a travel altar. So that was such a good question. And that's what I would do. I'd at least bring quartz. You don't have to bring everything all the time because we're also going to call in the angels, but I would at least bring quartz. So great question. So we're going to let the energy build by doing this in the same place as much as possible. But also if you're traveling, it's okay to do it in someone else's place as well. It's still going to work even if you haven't built the energy, but the more energy you build in your own space, the deeper you're going to be able to get in your sessions. So that is part of how you work in higher dimensional realms. You need to be able to get very deep. You need to have discernment, believe in your discernment, believe in yourself, understand how it works. You want to understand full protection. You want to be really secure in that. You want to build the energy. You want to have the skills to do it. You want to be a master teacher. I would recommend master teacher Reiki. And of course I recommend my own class, master teacher psychic Reiki, because it is great. And I do teach a lot of things, but I recommend a master teacher Reiki certification. I recommend that you have lots of skills, right? But you also need this high vibrational space. And if you are working somewhere else, that's fine too. You can bring it with you and especially the more that you do it. But but it's nice to have this one space that you use all the time that has such a high frequency and this is how you build it. Okay, so let's call in the angels. We're gonna call the angels in all four corners above and below. So right here in the West, we call in Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael has a beautiful blue light. So we call him the blue light. We call him in with his flaming sword of truth and discernment, asking him to cut all cords, to release all that's not serving us in our body and to fill us with his light and also stand in the South with fire to transmute all lower frequencies into love. And you can do this any way that you want, but this is how I do it. And I'd love to hear how you do it. Then I'm going to go to another corner and it doesn't matter which one. I always start with Michael because I just like him. He's wonderful and he does so much clearing. So it's easy to call him in first. He's known as the protective angel. So now I'm going to go to the north to Archangel Uriel, calling him in golden light, ruby red light, his sign of the pentacle and in the north with earth, calling him in and asking him to bring in his protection, his connection to peace and to the higher dimensional earth, to fey, to spirit beings and to resolutions, really. Uriel is a great angel for bringing in resolutions of problems. So I would call him in for that as well. Bring in that light, imagining that light, come in. Then we're going to go maybe to the east, calling in Raphael with his emerald green light bringing that in for healing. That's what he does. He's standing in the corner of East. So asking him to stand there and transmute all our frequencies to love. And he's in the corner of air, calling in air. You know, you don't have to remember every single thing, air, East, Raphael, but if you can, it's great. Calling that into the body. Then we're going to go to the West, to water, to Gabriel, asking Gabriel to stand in the West and transmute all lower frequencies to love and to bring in the diamond light frequency and his angel fire, bringing that in. It's very sparkly and amazing. I'm feeling great calling it in and, and also water and his diamond light dragons, bringing all that in. So now we've got all this going on. We've got all four corners covered. Now we're just going to call in ancestors, spirit guides, galactic teams, bay teams, angelic teams, whoever else, anyone who is for the highest and greatest good for us, we call them in. Then we're going to go below calling in Archangel Sandalphon. This is where I would say I disconnect from the 3D matrix and plug deeply to the 5D ascension growth with Gaia. And deeper than that, if you have that ability, if you're in tag and other places where you learn about all these other grids, you want to connect to all that and bring in that silvery light of Sandalphon up, up, up from there. And then you're going to call in above. You're going to call Archangel Metatron, bringing that gold light down, bringing that down as well. So all of this 
you can imagine it coming into your body, gold, silver, you know, blue, all the colors coming in and filling you and your space. And you can also imagine your whole space is like a capsule of light and all these colors like coming all around, especially the gold and the silver encasing it. And that's really very protective. So all of this really builds energy a lot, which is what I'm saying. And that is why I always teach channeling online, because the more that you do in your space, the more you're going to build it. And I know I already said that, but it's so important. And this energy will keep if you leave the room. I used to believe that you had to like make a little door, but that's not really true. You just make the intention that the energy keeps and that you can leave the room and come back in and it just keeps. It's almost like you, you're walking through the boundary, you know, you're building this great big space. And there's more that you can do about this when you do a class. I do teach that in my advanced accelerated channeling class. All right. So how can you tell if the beings are from the light when you're channeling? This is like a huge question that people really ask. How can you tell if the beings are from the light that you are channeling? Well, discernment is really hard to teach, but I do. And the way that I teach discernment is by teaching you, first of all, how to tell when they aren't from the light. So how can you tell when they aren't from the light? Well, they'll work on your doubts, self-loathing, addictions. They may make you feel good, like too good. They might open your clairs beyond belief and show you that you can do all these things and give you all these good feelings in the body and make you feel so powerful. And that's so that if someone clears it away, then you'll want it back. And this happens all the time. I see people saying, but I could see so much, but I could see so much. Yes, but that was not a being of the light showing you that. And so, you know, if you can just release that and go at your own pace, you're going to get there eventually. But by using a being of the dark, which I don't realize you know that you are using, that's not going to be it. So sometimes people call in another being of the dark just by wanting this back something that they had. So that's how they work on you. So that's one way to tell when something is not of the light. The other way you can tell is that you feel powerful. Like you're so powerful. I'm so important now. I'm so powerful. It really feeds your ego. This is not saying anything bad about you. If you get caught in this trap, this is a sign that you have some density to release that there's some part of you that feels unworthy, that you feel like you need to have power or something like that, that you need to be important by having these powers, you know, we're just channels, we're just channeling it. It's not ours where we just need to be really clear. We need to be clear vessels, right? So that's one way to tell, you know, I see people say, well, this is the only good thing I have. The rest of my life is shit. But I mean, how do you think the rest of your life got that way? Like that decision to quit your income, your job, so you have no freedom or choices, that decision to alienate your friends and family and people doing this, you know, sometimes they say, well, this one thing is so great, meaning the entity. And they think because the rest of my life is bad, but can you see that all these things that happened, you can see that indirect from something that's attached to you that's causing in your life, you know? So we have to really be willing to release these things. When you go to a spiritual session, have someone release it or force it to release, you can just call in another one immediately you know, if you really don't want to be free of it. So we can only do so much as healers. So that's how you know something is bad. It's giving you all this power and things like that. However, how I teach discernment is also by showing you exactly how it works when it's good. I'm there. I can tell I've been doing this a long time and I can help you know when it is from the light and I can help you begin to recognize that with so much practice. And you have me there showing you and helping you do it so that you know and you can trust that and then it will build and you'll begin to recognize it you'll recognize it right off for me i recognize it right off like if it's not of the light yeah was just reading in a bookstore about how some high profile celebrities can have these entities attached to them because they're seeking greater and greater yeah power yeah as healers we also need someone to help us heal so true gretchen how do you tell if you feel like you had a really good session where a great channel, strong healing happened and the difference between the ego and dark, the power feeling? So that's what I was talking about, that the best way to teach discernment for me is, and this is something I've been, you know, deep diving for the past five years, is just to teach people how it feels so that you know the difference. And really you just have to like trust that discernment and ask Archangel Michael to help. I do things like that in my teaching as well, helping you really connect to some discernment that can really help you discern 
but you have to just be able to tell the difference. So before you would start a session, you would have to make sure that you're clear and that way you wouldn't have to worry. Yeah, so the difference between ego from the session feeling great is, did you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm so powerful. I'm the best light worker there is. Everyone's come to me now. Woo! Or were you like, oh my gosh, that felt really powerful. I'm humbled by that feeling. I'm so glad I was able to help my client. This is such a beautiful work that I'm doing and I feel so renewed by it. I mean, those are two totally different things, right? And, and that's kind of how you tell. Yeah, I just wanted to say one last thing. Knowledge is power. Yeah, knowing these things. Lightworkers need each other to learn and to grow. And we need to know these things. And that's why I'm doing these lives for you. And they're in the guides. We have guides in this group to help you grow. And I really, really recommend them. Now I'm going to bring in my protection guide, Crouching Bear. I'm going to channel him to talk about this spiritual protection. But I will have to drink some water. Hold on. Water is a very important thing for a channel. Sometimes you can't channel because... You're not grounded, you don't have enough water, or you know, you're not clear, or maybe you're not at a certain stage yet and you're jumping ahead. But anyway, channeling my protector guide, Crouching Bear. Let's see what he has to say. Knowledge is power. And when I was a human on earth, we had the knowledge from our ancestors to do this work, and it was painstakingly recorded and repeated and taught. And now Humans are disconnected from this past, from this teaching and this learning. There's much deception in your planet. There is much disconnection from the past, which is, of course, purposeful. And that can lead you into practices that aren't for your greatest and highest good. And so learning more, always a student, is always beneficial to you. Always learning always being open, never thinking that you have already learned it all. It is impossible for a human to get to a place where they have already learned it all. That is another sign of the ego, but always being able to learn. This is your goal, asking your spirit guides to lead you to the path of knowledge so that you can trust your gifts. This is where we are, opening your spiritual Claire's, your sixth sense, as you may call it. These are mandatory parts of the human and for ascension. You need to open them and there are safe ways to do so. And so it is time to begin this now. Okay, it's Rachel. You totally took that mandatory word from my head. It is. It's time to do this. It is time. And always learning it. And always learning. I'm always learning. I tell my kid this all the time. He thinks he knows everything. I tell him, you know, I often watch things about subjects that I actually teach, you know, in extreme advanced classes. And yet I will still watch a beginning video about it because there's always something new to learn. There's always something new to learn. You can always learn something. Yeah. Thank you, Gretchen. You're so welcome. I hope that this helped. I really do. And, you know, let me know if you have any questions or you want to ask me anything, you want to post it in the group, that would be great. I'd love to know, how do you use spiritual protection? How do you know that you're channeling beings of the light? I'd love to have this discussion with you. So let's hear it in the comments. I'll come back and check them later. Okay. Thank you all so much for coming and I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye.